There is nothing unusual about an Android smartphone, but as soon as you put it in an individual's hands, it becomes a very unique, personal and unusual experience. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching C4E Tech, and this is the third instalment of What's on My Android Smartphone. So first of all, congratulations is in order. You've made it to part three of what's on my Android smartphone series, which covers my apps, widgets, and personal preferences. If you haven't watched part one and two yet, where I cover my launcher, wallpaper, all of my widgets, and even my smartwatch, click the links on screen now, and I'll see you in about 15 minutes. We are hitting the bottom half of the apps on my main home screen now, and of course, any self-respecting YouTuber uses the YouTube app a lot, which is pretty much flawless these days. And of course, your first YouTube port of call should always be C4E Tech. Specifically, you want to be heading over to the playlist section and checking out the Android Tips section, where you'll find all the best videos on the channel. Uh, isn't that right, Ash? No. Whoa, touchy subject. But speaking of YouTube, us video creators obsess over our analytics. And the YouTube Video Creator Studio app gives you so many numbers it will turn you a little bit loopy like Russell Crowe in that film A Beautiful Mind. Anyway, if you've looked at YouTube analytics on a desktop computer, this app perfectly transposes all of that data onto a smartphone screen, which is a remarkable achievement in itself. There's more than 50 data stats that will track your trends, demographics, traffic sources, audience retention and click-through rates for annotations, cards, polls and so on. Seriously, if you are a YouTuber, you need to download this app right now. It's OCD heaven. Sticking with the video format, we move from YouTube to the cinema. Flixster will latch onto your location and tell you where the nearest cinemas are and helpfully include a schedule of what movies have been shown that week. If you are more interested in a specific film, however, you can search by movie and find out which locations it's currently showing at. Flixster has never got a time or cinema location wrong, and it just makes last minute movie going plans so simple. The app also includes movie trailers, synopsis, reviews, and upcoming DVD releases. So other than tiny adverts at the bottom, there's nothing I can fault with the app. When it comes to music, my tastes range from terrible to non-existent, but I do have a couple of interesting audio apps to show you. First up is a second honorary mention in the series for Podcast Addict, the best free app for harvesting all those podcasts into one place. And next up is my second BBC app, which is iPlayer. This plays all the music, news and sports radio stations from my native homeland, and I often like to listen to sports coverage. However, this does present us with the international broadcasting rights issue. For example, I can't listen to English Premier League matches in Canada. So this is where a VPN or Virtual Private Network application can help switch your IP address to another country. TorGuide is one such example, a paid subscription service that allows me to connect back to the UK to do just that and listen to my football. And yeah, you can use VPN apps for other activities and we'll end the topic right there. And finally, the OnePlus X comes with an FM transmitter application to listen to radio, not that I ever use it. For photo apps, I want to call on your help, actually. I've never bothered to properly find a good photo app, and the native Google Photos app tends to annoy me far more than it should do these days. So if anyone does have a suggestion for a simple, functional photo app, I'm all ears. When it comes to Google Snapseed, however, I love it. But in order to demonstrate it properly, we're going to have to go landscape. Oh, dem skills. Snapseed is a photo editor at heart, but I use it for one thing, and that's applying the HDR filter. It doesn't work on all photos, but when it does, it enhances the original image beautifully. And that's pretty much the only reason I have this app. A few taps leads to stunning results. And that picture is going to be my new Facebook cover. Now, obviously, I can't show you the banking apps I use for, well, you know, privacy and security reasons. So on the final row of my main home screen, we've got three of Google's staple applications. Maps does an exceptional job of being a free-to-use sat-nav these days, while Google Chrome and Google Drive offer you browser and online storage options. Which neatly brings us onto our next icon, which is actually a folder. And this is where I keep all my reference applications. Wikipedia I'm sure you've all heard of and use on a regular basis, while IMDB offers you more of the same encyclopedia type stuff for movies and television shows. And naturally, if you're a tech geek, you'll want a smartphone equivalent too, and this is where Mr. Phone comes into play. You can search for a specific phone, compare two phones, or browse what's new and hot. When you do, Mr. Phone will offer you a picture gallery of a device along with all the important vital statistics from CPU to screen size to operating system to price, launch date, camera specs and a whole load more along with associated news stories. 
Seriously, I covered this in more detail in one of my C4 eTech best apps videos, and I still think it's one of the best Android apps in existence. And it doesn't just cover new devices either, the history of mobile phones is already pretty rich and deep, and you can browse through Mr. Phone's enormous catalogue to find thousands of devices, including this one, which has a teeny tiny screen and whatever these things are used for. Eh? The rest of my main home screen apps should all be familiar to you with various email clients, Facebook and the Messenger app along with the Google Play Store and sitting right in the very corner is the settings button for my entire device, which gives us a grand total of 51 applications. And with the main home screen dealt with, let's move on to my last home screen. There's a lot less to cover here and it mostly comprises of communication apps such as phone, SMS, WhatsApp and Slack. All apps that usually notify me anyway so I don't need to put them front and centre on my smartphone. But this camera icon is where things start to get interesting again. With every video I make I'm often asked how I record and edit them and the process starts here with ADV Screen Recorder. Since Android Lollipop you've been able to directly record your screen and it takes so many tricky variables out of recording, such as lighting, white balance, focus and colour temperature. It also makes the editing process easier too, enabling me to zoom, pan and create movement and animations exactly to my needs. Obviously to get the final effect it takes a little more than just recording my screen, and for more insight into this you can watch my detailed video I made about the process from the link in the video description. In summary the process requires four layers, the screen recording, behind that a cutout of a smartphone, behind that a blur effect, and behind that a second copy of a recorded screen blown up to cover the background. Simple really. There are a couple more what you might consider gadget apps in the camera folder that include the Panasonic image app that connects my Panasonic G7 camera to my smartphone in case I want to do any remote recording. The Playbulb app I showed you in part 2 also sits here along with something called Dotty. Dotty is a small 64 pixel notification light with an internal battery and it connects to your phone where you can use the app to select presets or even draw your own pixel pictures. It is very much a gimmick and the app is a little too clunky for my liking as it takes ages to draw stuff and one mistake can often ruin the thing you've been trying to create for the last 5 minutes. If you have the patience though you can draw up to 8 pixel pictures and set them off as a funky animation. And that's it for part 3 of what's on my Android smartphone. You should know the drill by now, like the video if you enjoyed it, add a comment if you've got something to say, and if you want more daily content on the latest smartphone hardware and software, make sure you subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your tech day. No. 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 No.